Hi there and welcome to the VB Toolbox. In this tutorial I want to show you how to create a transparent and windowless form uh, that is still easy to move around your screen. This is actually a pretty simple tutorial but it's uh, kind of a cool effect. I'll show you what I'm working with here. This is uh, the end result. Uh, as you can see it's a fully functional form. We have buttons and a list box and uh, you know, it, really anything you want to put on there. Um, but there is no title bar or standard exit or minimize button or anything like that. It's just a very custom form. It's kind of cool. Uh, you can see right through here. So I'm going to just uh, go ahead and get started. Now, the image that I'm going to be working with is just a very uh, simple. Uh, image that I made in GIMP. It's just a PNG file. Uh, as you can see, I've, I've just uh, essentially cut out the edges and a little star here, made them transparent. Uh, it's just the alpha color. And Visual Basic uh, actually recognizes these transparencies. So uh, when you pull a BN, uh, PNG graphic into your application, it should be able to recognize that. And anywhere you have that, it should be transparent. Now, making that actually uh, transparent on the form is a whole other issue, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to click on a new project in Visual Studio, and I want to do a Windows Forms application, and here uh, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call mine, uh, how about transform, I get it, yeah. It's a transparent form, so I will hit OK once I've given it a name, and it will create my project template. All right, and from here, uh, you can kind of just use whatever image you want to use. You can create one in GAMP or any other program if you want. It's kind of totally up to you. Um, I will put a shortcut to my source code and you can use my image as well. Uh, it'll be in that project file uh, zipped in there so you can use that to follow along too. So now that we have our form generated if you click anywhere in your form you should be able to see the properties window here on the side um, below your solution explorer and in here there's a few different things with a few different uh, properties we need to change on this um, the first being we want to add the image as the background image. So um, I'm going to find the background image property and I'm going to click on that and I'm going to hit the import button and this will allow us to browse for our PNG file. I've got mine out on my desktop here. And now that I have that and there's a little preview, you can click OK. And as you can see, my form does not exactly uh, match the image size. And you can kind of stretch that out and you'll be like, oh my gosh, it's tiled. So what we can do is change the um, background image layout property. And uh, what we want to do is set the value that, whoops, I clicked on the image. Um, change from tile to um, none. And that will just display the image on the background of the form once. All right, and once you've done that, uh, we're ready to move on to the next property. And as you can see, it doesn't really look transparent in here, and that's because we haven't actually made the background color of the form transparent yet. And we will get to that. Um, but before we get there, uh, we want to get rid of the Windows title bar here and any text on there that might show up and uh, our controls. So uh, to get rid of the controls we can find the control box property and set that to false and that gets rid of those guys. Now we need, need to get rid of the uh, title bar here as well so I'm gonna just get rid of the text, the form text by going to the text property, clear that and boom it disappears. Now one other thing we want to change here is um, if we were to run this now it's gonna look something like well I can't even uh, because I took away my 
control box, I can't even move my form over to the other screen. So I'm going to have to stop that. Um, but what I was going to say is that the, uh, the form still has a border around it. And so that would show up, even if we had made this transparent already, uh, it's still going to show up as, you know, kind of like it did before. Um, but you're going to have a weird border or frame around it. So what I'm going to do uh, is just kind of get this um, the size you want it, and then um, find the form border style property here. Ah, there it is. And right now it's set to sizable. We can change the size of it and whatnot when we run our application. I just want to completely get rid of the border. So I'm going to select the none property here. And now uh, it should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and throw a couple of common controls on there just for fun. And you can add whatever controls you want. I'm just kind of going with what I had before. I'm just going to throw on a list box and um, maybe a, a button. There we go. You can kind of scale those however you want. Uh, if you want, you can change the values. I'm, you know, the button didn't really do anything before. It's just for, uh, just to kind of give you an example of what you can do and how you can uh, still use this form like you would any other Windows form. So do whatever you want with that. I added a few uh, items into here. It's not necessary. Um, don't want to waste too much time on this. Put a few animals. Um, zebra, chicken, you get the idea. Um, again, that's just for the sake of having something on there <laughs> to look at. Um, so once we've got all this, uh, you can go ahead and save your project. Uh, just to make sure if you ever get any errors, it's nice to have that saved. Um, now what we want to do is actually get some coding done on this. So uh, let's just double click on your form or press the F7 key to open your um, code editor. And in here, one of the first properties, you know, if you double click on your form, it's going to generate a form load event. Um, you can use that or as I like to use the uh, uh, form if you select from your events, use the form shown event. Uh, that makes sure that any errors that occur would be shown uh, instead of suppressed, like the form load will sometimes do. So just a little tip. Um, once we have this, what we can do uh, is make the forms uh, background transparent this is surprisingly easy to do so uh, all we have to do is say me that's the form and transparency key equals me dot back color so what we're doing is we're just setting the background whatever color that may be um, we're setting that to be equal to the transparency key so it literally makes the form transparent now again I don't think I can uh, actually load my project into view for you but go ahead and run yours and you'll kind of see what's going on there uh, you should have a um, visible window there uh, with you know the star should be invisible anything in the background because this is transparent on your image anywhere that the image has transparency uh, the background of the form would be showing but because the background of the form is transparent you should be able to see right through all of those parts pretty cool stuff so uh, that's just I mean a one-liner very simple to make your form transparent <clears throat> now you do have to be careful you can get some weird effects um, if I were to set the background color and this is kind of important if I set the background color to be equal to white or whatever color the standard control color is here um, for say my my list box it will actually make all of the parts on the form that are that color uh, transparent including the background of this uh, list box so you could be able to see right through that as well 
and it gets a little weird with the fonts and stuff. Could be a cool effect if that's what you were desiring, but if you actually want a functional form and uh, don't want the backgrounds of those to be messed around with, then uh, you don't want the background of your form to be the same background color as your controls. Okay, moving on. Now, as it stands, uh, because I have two monitors here, if I run this, you can't see my form and I cannot move it. And that's, you know, always a big problem with these. So uh, what I want to do is make it so I can move my form. So let's hop back into the code editor here. And uh, we're just going to need a couple of variables in our class. Uh, so I'm going to start with a private variable called uh, the move rectangle. And what this will... Um, represent, sorry, jumping back and forth here, is this little guy right up here. You see this? I made this little graphic for moving. Now this could be literally any part of your form. You can put this uh, control anywhere you want. Um, I just wanted it you know, to kind of be a little separate entity up here. I thought it'd be kind of a cool effect. So I need to create a rectangle and I'm going to do this uh, private move rect as new rectangle. And the coordinates and size of this rectangle um, will want to match that up as closely as we can with our control box, okay? And I don't have the exact pixel dimensions here in front of me uh, from the very corner of the screen here to the edge of this box, as you can see. Um, so I'm just going to kind of guess it a little bit. Uh, I'm going to guess maybe this corner is about 10 pixels in and down from the top and this one may be about 32 pixels in so I'm just going to do um, an X coordinate of 10, a Y coordinate of 10 that's 10 to the right and 10 down from the top in pixels and roughly 32 by 32 in size so that's going to create a 32 by 32 box um, 10 pixels down. So there's an invisible rectangle that will be in that area. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll call this the action area for our mover. The mover being that little graphic in the corner. And once we have that, um, we're going to need some way to set sort of like a, a movement mode. We want to create a, you know, turn that into an active control, not just an image. So uh, first thing I'm going to need down here is uh, some sort of drag modes that I can monitor. And we're just going to make this up. I'm going to say private uh, enum. That creates an enumerable list. Um, and I'm just going to call it drag mode, okay? And we have to add some elements to this, so I'm just going to add one called enabled, and this will these will be our uh, these will act as properties for um, our little action area, and a disabled, okay? So I've got those, and now I can create a variable up here to store one of those values as I desire, and so I'm going to create. A variable called is moving and it kind of sounds like a boolean value and I'm gonna say as a drag mode okay so this can be equal to either enabled or disabled and I'm gonna give it a default value of disabled uh, when we start up our form we don't want it to be in uh, you know a moving state and we want to toggle this action based upon uh, if our mouse is clicked in this movement rectangle. So, leave a little note here, set the drag, uh, whoops, set the drag mode. Okay, so we're gonna need a couple of other events here. One, um, logically, when you go to drag a window, what's the first thing you do to do that? Well, you, um, you click on it on the title bar and you drag it around in Windows, right? So um, we're going to capture the mouse down event to toggle this is moving. And as soon as it goes, as soon as the mouse button is clicked down and held, um, this is moving is going to change to enabled. 
that's our objective. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to want another event here, so let's go to our form events, and we want to find um, the mouse down event. All right. What did I do there? Sorry about that. Put that guy back up there. Okay. Um, so now we have the mouse down event. Um, here I want to activate drag mode. If the mover area is clicked, okay. And what's the mover area? That's our rectangle that we've defined here in this variable. So activate drag mode. If mover area is clicked, I am going to um, say if my move rectangle dot contains, meaning it's going to check the contents or anything uh, coordinates that are inside of it. If it contains e dot location, and that is the location on the form of the mouse pointer, because we're capturing the mouse events here. So if the mouse's coordinates are located or discovered inside of our move rectangle, then is moving equals drag mode dot enabled. That's all there is to it. Piece of cake. All right. Now, in the event, uh, you know, once you've done that, you don't want it to be locked on forever. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to place it back down anywhere on the screen. We want it to track our mouse movements, um, but as soon as we let let up on the mouse as you do in a drag and drop event um, you know you want it to uh, be disabled again you want it to be actually placed down so we want to go back to our form events again this time we want to find the mouse up event okay and when we've got that we'll say disable drag mode when the mouse button is released and uh, to do this all we have to do is say if the is moving variable is enabled then is moving is disabled so mouse down we turn it on mouse up we turn it off pretty straightforward. So now that we have all the action defined here, um, all we need to do now is tell it, you know, when this uh, variable is, when our drag mode is set to enabled, then, you know, as the mouse is moving around the screen and the mouse is down, um, make the form track the mouse movements, okay? So, uh, we need to go back up here. We need one more event, and we're going to find the mouse move event. Okay. And um, here, all we need to do is uh, move form if drag mode is enabled. Okay. Um, so to do this, let's uh, say if is moving equals drag mode dot enabled then um, we want to check the forms location on the screen okay so we'll say me dot location and we have to give it a new location, that being uh, where the mouse pointer is. Now one problem, uh, if you're not careful, is when your mouse is over your form, the coordinates that the mouse move event is tracking is only internal to that form. So if you're moving around the form, um, you're only capturing you know, your distance, your mouse pointer coordinates are only the distance from the top leftmost corner of your form. Uh, that does not equate to what is you know actually on your screen. So setting the form's location, this guy here is related to the screen. 
um, to be equal to the other one, it's going to freak it out. Uh, you go to move your mouse and it's not going to uh, know exactly what to do with the form. So we have to factor in the screen's position uh, as well as the mouse's position on the form and then do a little bit of math on that to uh, get a calculated value. So we'll just say uh, we want to change the location of the form to be equal to a new point Oops. new point and this point will be me Actually, we're going to want another set of parentheses here. Um, me dot location dot x because we want to set the x value um, plus e dot x. Okay, so that gets the forms, the mouse's um, x coordinate on the form as well as the forms x coordinate on your actual monitor. I hope that makes sense. And then you add those together and you get the, the total um, position for a nice smooth move on your uh, dragging event. And um, then we can say for a Y location we do pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, first we calculate the Y coordinate of, um, actually let's see, I want me dot location dot y plus uh, e dot y okay and it should take that hopefully and do a little test here real quick all right it's working so um, now you'll notice one thing my mouse is kind of you know as soon as I picked up the form and started moving it and you may notice this too my mouse is kind of like up off my little control and I kind of want my mouse to stay on the control I mean it's it's not a huge deal I mean it's it works and we can move and see through our form that's cool but um, I just want it to kind of snap to this little thing even if it's you know more toward that there's a you can get kind of complex on your math. I'm not going to do anything too complex here. I just want to add another value in here. Actually I want to subtract. Um, I want to say minus my move rectangles uh, x position and over here I want to do the same thing. Minus my movement rectangles oops, y position. Hopefully that'll get me in a little closer to my um, my movement rectangle. Yeah, that looks a lot better. At least I'm on it there. I mean, you could do a little more trickery and you know maybe add a few pixels to that to kind of get me closer to the center of that. But not a big deal as long as I'm on the control and I can move my form. It feels pretty good to me. So. Anyway, that's really all there is to it. I hope that this has been helpful. Um, one thing that I had before that I, I didn't add on this one is I just added, had a little button up here to actually close the application. It's like, oh cool, I can you know run my application and move it around, but uh, how do I close it? You know, shy of using an Alt F4. Um, this is really easy. All you gotta do, add a little button. Um, you can change the background color like I had and had before. Um, you know, change the text to something like X, and you know you can rename your button or just double click it. And here, all you literally have to do is say end, and that will um, close your application. Very simple. So now I run it works good, could add other forms, could do all sorts of uh, other stuff. Um, really the sky's the limit. It's just like working with any other form except for it is now very custom and transparent on the edges. Bam! That goes away. So anyway, I uh, wanted to kind of keep this short and sweet. I appreciate you watching the video and I will uh, try to get the source code available for this tutorial as soon as possible and it will be down in the description or the about section. So I, I hope this has been a help to you. Uh, I, 
share it with anybody you think will find it useful. I appreciate uh, all the support and I wish you all well in your projects. Thanks. Bye-bye.